Hey, it's Nitya with Nitya Living. Thank you for joining us today. Um, please subscribe and like if Bazi Chinese astrology is something that you're interested in. Chinese astrology, I often say, is of the earth and Western astrology is of the sky. So it's as, as above, so below. And it takes into account the five elements. And the five elements are fire, earth, metal, water, wood. Back to fire again. So somebody in the comments in one of my other videos had asked about Princess Diana, Princess of Wales. And I remember looking at her chart a long time ago before I had reached master's level in Bazi Chinese astrology with my teacher, Dr. Paul Yen, who has long since retired, unfortunately. Um, and uh, her birthday, shoot, I didn't write it down. Um, got it here, hold on a second. Um, she's born July 1st, 1961. And she, the time of her birth is in question, but I did some research and found that the time of seven in the, in the evening is actually been purported to be wrong. And that her actual time of birth is two o'clock in the afternoon. Given that it is, uh, during daylight savings time in July, we're gonna back that time up by an hour to one o'clock in the afternoon. This feels like the right placement. If anybody has a different time, please make that comment so I can make adjustments. But I will tell you why in a minute as to why I think that that really speaks to the correct time. Time is really important with astrology. With Chinese astrology, it's different though because there are two hour blocks. For instance, the hour of the rat that begins the day um, is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., which is interesting because the rat can start, you know, is the end of a day and the beginning of a day. And then it goes around one to three, three to five, five to seven, seven to nine, nine to 11. So she is born in the year of a yin metal ox, the month of yang wood horse, the day of yin wood sheep, and the hour of yang water horse. So you heard yin a lot, and that is definitely an attribute to her chart is she is, she was too yin. And, um, we're, you know, I mention this a lot. Balance is so critical for us to feel overall well-being. Someone that is too yin is going to be a little more passive, a little more maybe reserved or shy, uh, maybe more introverted, um, doesn't question authority, is submissive. Also nurturing right? There's, there's, I mean, there's beautiful qualities to everything, you know, the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine. But that feminine essence was very strong for her, very strong. And I think that she wishes, I think she wished that she had more, in, more strength, more masculine, to be more assertive and to find her voice because I think when she did use her voice, she got smacked down for it. When she spoke her opinion, she was ridiculed. She was scrutinized. I don't know anyone in history that has been, that was so hounded by the media, that was so adored by the public. And yet the public, you know, in our adoration of her, in our lust, for knowing more and seeing more pictures of her and knowing more about what she was up to, that we fueled the fire of an industry that killed her, the paparazzi killed her. Of course, there's speculation that um, 
the royal family had it set up and we'll, who will ever know. Um, but I will say that having two, two horses in her chart is a self punishment that makes sense to me because I think that she was embattled with herself. Someone who is, has this arrangement, um, the two horses, and there's other animals that you can have in double that lead to a self-punishment. And self-punishment is just that. It's somebody who is wrestling hard with themselves. And I will also say bulimia, which is something that she struggled with during her marriage to Prince Charles, now King Charles, um, is all about what you eat right? So what you eat, how you nourish yourself, that's earth element. And as a wood person, earth is what she controls. And actually that was pretty strongly balanced at 26%. Her own wood element balanced at 23%. Um, but going back to earth as being your nourishment, your, how you digest your food, right? All of that is what she's controlling and bulimia, throwing that up, releasing it, rejecting it, right? That is her giving up her control or, and or feeling out of control. And certainly she walked into an arrangement, an arrangement of a marriage that um, in her naivete, she, she got eaten alive. Now, yeah, there's the irony, right? She was getting eaten alive while she was vomiting up everything she could because she felt so out of control. But she didn't have control. She didn't have choice. She didn't have a voice. So let's go more. Um... Interestingly enough, in her day pillar of the sheep, which is somebody who is um, very musical, someone who is very artistic, creative, someone who is very passive and quiet, a peacemaker, and what torture for her that she grew up in a raging household uh, with parents that divorced when she was seven years old with um, a mother that was grief stricken for a brother that died before a year before she was born, I believe. Um, and so it's like, there's all this conflict for someone that's a peacekeeper that just wants everyone to get along. I honestly think she would have been far happier if she had just stayed a school teacher whatever. Here we go. Born. Um, so, oh, so the day pillar, I was, it's so interesting. This yin earth shows up as her father. And so this suggests that the man that she would marry her lovers, she would look for a father figure, someone who was much older than her, which is exactly what Prince Charles was at the time. And um, this was also what she looked for in a relationship underneath of the, the father figure was love and also a measure of friendship and compatibility and also playful action. Like, um, yeah, like, you know, enjoying each other's company, being actively engaged in life in a fun way. Um, and all of that's going on. And then we look at her hour, Yang Water fi um, Horse, which is um, showing that her sons show up as Yang Water, which is so nourishing for her as someone who is weak in water, somewhere between 13%, just slightly weak, not terrible. Um, but she struggled for support for sure. And um, her sons were more nurturing and maternal towards her 
It was almost like a role reversal. She really needed them. She needed them. They were comfort and solace to her. Um, yeah, really sweet. Her father shows up as somebody who was very much akin to her, but at the same time embattled. And her mother shows up as a daughter, someone who Diana felt that she was caring for, right? And um, also within the mother is mention of the father. So more like the mother was playing more of a disciplinary, authoritative, patriarchal role. Um, very interesting. And, you know, as we move through her luck cycles, her first luck cycle was very early in life at the age of one. And this probably speaks to her mother being, having um, been grief stricken by the loss of her brother that was just a year before she was born. I mean, that's heavy stuff. Um, <coughs> I looked and did not see anything particularly um, about Diana at the age of one that suggested that she was at risk. But there is suggestion in her month that her infancy was very fragile. And the likelihood of her dying in infancy was very high. Her, li her life force was fragile and weak in the very beginning of her life. So as she moved into um, her life from the ages of one to 10 was a yin wood sheep, just like her day pillar. And this really spoke of her finding her, her way in life, being independent, feeling confident. Very early on in life, she had a strong sense of self this also speaks to her sisters. It speaks to her father taking on a far stronger role in her life. And I know at some point he took custody of her. Um, and then we move into this period, eleven, ages 11 to 20, which in the midst of this time, right near the end of this luck cycle was when she got engaged and married. And so we come to um, this period that was Yang Fire Monkey that suggested big changes in her life, significant changes, and also a marriage. Um, motherhood, travel, wealth, moving, being on the go, all of that was in that period. Um, and so you can imagine that during this time, also added responsibilities as a young girl of age 11 to her home and family. There was a lot of movement, a lot of changing things going on during this time for her. And not just the chaos of her family, but also her schooling, going off to, to college and starting work, all of these things happening. And um we then move into the the period in which she really was so immersed in her marriage um which was a yin fire rooster and you even notice the period 11 from uh each one of these luck cycles is pitting one element against the other from the very beginning. You've got wood covering earth, right? Then you've got fire smelting metal. Then you've got, again, a smaller amount of fire smelting metal. So there is conflict throughout this poor woman's life. And this period of tw ages 21 to 30 were very much about being joyfully engaged, being very active, very 
yeah, just very active in her life, this fire energy. And it actually suggested daughters being born, um, which is interesting. And this yin metal really shows how challenged she was. It suggests backstabbing. It suggests people working at cross purposes to her. It suggests um, people in authority being critical, harsh, demanding of her. Um, and then we move to her last luck cycle. It's really amazing that she was only here for 36 years. This last luck cycle was Yang Earth Dog. The dog along with her year of an ox and day of the sheep, brought in a full punishment, um, suggesting that family dynamics are weakening her life force. This is an unbelievable stress. And this is the tipping point in her marriage when everything fell apart. And um, we also see um, different interactions going on. But this period suggested a lot of travel, a lot of moving. Um, it suggested, again, this undercurrent of harm for her, of being challenged and criticized by authority figures. It, um, and yet there's a major amount of wealth and abundance in this. You know, she told her story and had a book written, several books were written about her, but I think that she was really starting to speak her voice and get out there. Um, and again, Earth is the element that she controls. It's the element where she was prospering during this time, even though this dog was creating a horrible punishment. And it just kind of goes from there, getting worse. So in this conflicted chart where you've got um, and I'm going to get into it in a minute, a lot of conflict. Her life pillar, which is really tells the story of why she was here, is very much about her sons. And William and Harry were everything for her. Everything. And to a lesser extent is family and husband, lovers to a lesser extent, is wealth and property. And there's also, this is a yin water snake. Um, and again, we've got water and fire. I mean, it's like there is just a lot of conflict. But that being said, water and fire does make that sizzle. And there is a certain, you know, there was sex appeal. She was a beautiful woman. Um and she exuded that, you know, as part of what attracted masses of people to want to follow her. Um, there is that yin water is giving her support from outside resources. This is also education and teaching. Told you she should have been a school teacher. She would have saved herself all kinds of trouble. Um, but who knows? Who knows if her life still would have been cut short. It speaks also of faith and spirituality, deeply spiritual journey that she was on, maybe not aware of it, but definitely there. So when we look at um, this life pillar um, with the snake is adding to her, sh her horses and her sheep, creating a full fire trio. And fire is what she creates. So this was somebody that was very dynamic, a lot of fire energy. Then we have um, that the current luck cycle of the dog, her last luck cycle, in combination with her two horses, created a semi-fire trio. So now we've got even more fire coming in. Again, we have the full punishment with this dog luck cycle, her last one, with her ox and sheep creating this punishment of all this earth energy. 
bringing it all down. Too much conflict in family dynamics, bringing her down and everything with it. Um, and again, I mentioned the two horses in her chart, a self-punishment. Someone who just was in an internal battle with herself. It would be interesting to see um, how much Gemini energy is in her Western chart, because I know that can be the battle of the twins, right? Um, so continuing on, the ox and the sheep. Here we go again, more self-punishment. Her year and her day pillar fight with each other. And this is something that weakens her water, which is what supports her and challenges her fire. We also have the ox and her horses are in harm to each other, further weakening fire. So fire is all over the place. It's strengthened and it's weakened. It's strengthened and it's weakened. And what is fire but mental health? So the overall, it's an unstable element. It's surging and waning. Um, when you look at the day that she died, which was August 31st, 1997, I rem we all remember where we were when that news hit. Nobody could believe it. Um, it was a yin fire ox year. It was the month of a yang earth monkey, the day of a yin wood snake. Now I've spoken enough about this, this year of the tiger to say that the snake and the monkey are part of the punishment that the tiger would complete but there is no tiger in this story. But the Sushen, the snake and the monkey are a partial punishment, suggesting accidents, upsets, sickness, lawsuits, bankruptcy, accidents for sure. The fact that it was the month of the monkey, which is Yang metal and the day with Yang fire fire and metal, the fact that it's a punishment, fire and metal, it's a car accident. It could also be a plane crash, but those two banging up against each other, definitely. Um, and then we have the ox year that was challenging her own ox year self a lot of conflict, a lot of conflict. And um, the other thing I was going to mention about her day pillar in relation to looking for an older man is that there is also suggestion here of infidelity on both sides as being something that is just part of her romance journey. That being said, she is someone that was very romantic, very sensual. Um, and it's sad that her time with Charles was so conflicted that her passions were re restricted. It had to be awful for her. It was like being in a prison. She um, is an idealist, a dreamer. Um, someone who loved the arts, fashion, um, creating a beautiful home, all of these things. Somebody who loved life. But the good life, the fun life, this is kind of the setup for somebody that could become an alcoholic, a drug addict, 
or have an eating disorder, again, this shows up. There's multiple ways that this can happen. There's multiple things going on in her chart that suggest conflict, self-conflict, self-punishment, external punishment. Um, it's, it's, for me, it, you know, looking at this as an astrologer, it's just really sad, especially knowing that she was a sheep, somebody that was just very peaceful inside. And again, I do wonder, you know, when we choose our paths in life, what would have happened if you had made a different choice at a really, really critical moment in your life? What if you had made a different choice? Where would you be now? What would have happened differently? Would you have been able to have sidestepped some, some of the hardship, tragedy, and upset that you've dealt with in life? Would it have been easier? We'll never know, right? Would she have been content being a, a, a school teacher or, you know, marrying someone else of high stature that loved her? At least she found someone in the end who loved her. At least in the end, she was happy with someone, right? She had some time with that. Um, anyway. Blessings to her family and um, her sweet self. Thank you so much. And your comments are welcome. Please keep them positive. Be well.